Hey, this is Jewel Taker from the Jewel Taker Show on Impact Network. Also, you can watch me and my family on The Tankers on Prime Amazon or watch me and my sister's Chatter Talk Show on Fox. So me and my girls, Dr. Dee Dee Freeman, Monique Islet Mosley, Real Talk Kim, and Holly Carter. And you're watching Rudy Radio. You're listening to Rudy Radio, powered by Rude Rangers Entertainment. I'm Tara Renee from African American Women in Cinema Organization, and this is Talk with Tara, a show that highlights fantastic filmmakers, artists, and entertainers from all walks of life. We're committed to introducing you to individuals, organizations, and projects, which you are not necessarily aware. And we do this with the intention of uplifting, empowering, and enlightening you. If you can, please share this episode on all of your social media platforms. We love it if you text your friends and ask them to tune in. Today, we are in for a fabulous treat. I have a powerful duo of talented filmmakers with me, hailing from Oklahoma. I met them when we did our historic film festival in the centennial commemoration of the 1921 Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre. And uh, these young, fabulous men are just phenomenal. I cannot wait for you all to hear them. Uh, and their story and how they got to that point and where they are now. So audience, please help me welcome Marcus and Doctor. <laughs> how are you all today? <laughs> I'm well, all right, all right. <laughs> it is so good to have you on the show and um, thank you so much for being here and taking out the time uh, to be here with me and the audience. I, I have to say, uh, in seeing your film, uh, I tell you, you both have captured for me, the essence of the, of this horrific tragedy. I felt like I was actually there in 1921 because you so meticulously put together a story that for me, really uh, brought it to to an understanding of what I didn't know about and many others didn't know about, you know, that took place, unfortunately, a hundred years ago. How, how did you get, well, first, you know, I'm going to jump into that, like, all in. But I first want to ask you, how did you even get into filmmaking? Well, uh, for me, I was editing video already. Um, mm -hmm just uh chopping up stuff for friends and you know just making my own little videos and but movies is something i've always wanted to do i just wasn't aware of what you had to do to get started um, <laughs> and then i went on a, a church fast and we go to church together so oh, um I, I i've heard god telling me to get with him about starting this business and to make movies and i went and talked to him and he said he was hearing the same exact thing and the rest wow of yeah, Ooh, uh, so this is DeCoven, uh, but doctors <laughs> <laughs> I'm referring to. Um, yeah, some similar. I mean, I, I wasn't into video editing. I have a music background. Um, I produce music and engineer uh, for many years. And um, when Marcus came to me about the idea, it was something that I had thought about previously as well, like getting with some people who do film because I'm a I'm a movie buff. I love films. And so when, when he said that, it was like, I mean, yeah, it just makes sense for us to bring our two parts together. He does video editing. I do music and, and, and vocal editing. So, I mean, that's at least two parts of what you need. At least we thought <laughs> until we... Until we started Dove making a movie. All the way into actually <laughs> filmmaking. And uh, yeah, back in 2019, uh, April, we uh, opened our doors to Notice Studios. 
Mm, that is beautiful. First, I want to just again commend you and thank you for listening to the call because it is needed for such a time as this. And clearly you all have a gifting to tell a story that will just take it to another level in the messaging. And it is truly needed. So thank you uh, for that. Now, here comes my part that I've been itching to ask. How did you all uh, decide to tell the story about what happened in Tulsa? Uh-oh. Is that a loaded question? <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Um, so, yeah, very interesting. Um, I didn't learn about the massacre until my junior year in college, um, wow. graduate of, of Langston University, LU, L's up. Um, I was walking through our, our Black Heritage Library and there was a display up for mm. the massacre. And I, I was just walking, going to where I was going and I walked past it and it, I don't know, it just caught me and made me stop in my tracks and I backed up and mm -hmm. started reading it and looking. And I immediately go to look to see was the movies out about that? I'm like, surely there has to be, because I'd already seen Rosewood um, mm -hmm. and all the other, you know, slave movies and everything else. So I'm like, something like this had they, they had to talk about this, and I'm I'm just slow. I'm the one that didn't didn't know <laughs> about it, um, and nothing other. I, I saw some documentaries um, mm -hmm. out there, but there really wasn't much. And this we talking back in 2000 and six yeah and there was it just wasn't a lot of stuff out at that particular point and so i i said to myself somebody should make a movie about this and went on about my business and when we decided to put the company together that was the first thing that i said to the group it was like we need to make black wall street mm. and i said no <laughs> Yeah. You said no, Marcus? Yes, I did. <laughs> Why you say no? For, for your first film to do something that <laughs> that big, that important, I, I was like, people are going to rip this movie to pieces if we make this movie. <laughs> yeah. And originally, I was like, I think we can do it, but we hadn't made anything yet. So mm. it was like, let's try to make something. And we made our first short, Her. Um, if you go on our YouTube channel, uh, Notice Studios on YouTube, um, you can take a look at her, which was our first, our first movie, mm -hmm. first short film. It's about 18 minutes. Um, and myself and my wife, we acted in the movie. And mm -hmm. uh, Marcus comes in at the end, being the, being the villain, uh, <laughs> almost. But um, after we filmed that, I don't know. I think we, we bought a, set, a second camera and I was like, it's time for us to film Black Wall Street. <laughs> and I still was like, no. And I, wow. I drug him around, kicking and screaming the whole way <laughs> to the end. And he drug me kicking and screaming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it was a nice day. I didn't want to make the movie the whole time we were making it because I was mm. like, people aren't going to like it. You know, we're just two guys that live in Oklahoma and, you know, we're just make we're trying to make this huge movie. We don't, it's not Hollywood. It's not big budget. And he was just like, no, we got this. We could do this. This you know, this is this guy's telling us to do this. We could do it. And then it was cool. And then when the movie, the day we released it in theaters, he was mm. like, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know if it's, and I'm in the car like, we got this. We're going to do it. It was like, we just switched places once yeah. the movie came out. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, and then after the first showing, uh, when the credits rolled, it was just dead silent in the theater. And we were in wow. the back like, do people hate it? Is and it, it was interesting because it was the middle of the day. So the first showing was like at 2.30 in the afternoon yeah. on mm -hmm. a Friday. Mm -hmm. And it was a it was a handful of people in there. It was probably like 20 or 30 people in, the, in there. Um, and so it wasn't anybody that we necessarily Ooh, had brought yeah. to the movie. It was we. Uh, they just heard about it and came out and so yeah i was looking at marcus like i'm not sure what's happening because nobody was saying anything nobody was moving they were just <laughs> sitting there i'm like what does this mean is it good? is it bad 
and then we walked out and the people came to us and started talking to us about it and it wasn't it was, um, everybody liked it and it was yeah yeah I, but the more showings because we would always go to the showings um we went to one two to two states we went to the showings yeah one in, in texas and, one yeah, in, and you and you'd see people clap you see people cry uh white and black people embracing each other white people apologizing wow. yeah and wow. that's when i was like okay we did we we did the right thing we yeah. we, 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 we we made something that mattered it wasn't just mm -hmm. you know a movie we made a film mm -hmm. that is so powerful what a journey how long did it take you all to shoot that um so we sh so the cast was all nine actors N nobody wow. was an actor um in this film and so we had to work around everyone's schedule so we really took a, a series of weekends mm -hmm. um started in october, october. yeah mm -hmm. we did a two weekends in october i think we shot friday and saturday and then a saturday and sunday and then we shot like two or three more days in mm -hmm. december yeah. and then i think we picked up maybe one more day after we shot everything that we thought we needed we, we went added back stuff added a few things um so i think it was like a total of like seven days Wow. Total, none of them were like back to back uh -huh. days like that. It was over a series of weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. How did you do your casting? I mean, the actors, they were great. How did you do that? Um, um, friends and yeah, family. Friends and the, family. The people wow. we go to church with. Okay. okay. A lot of people we go to church with and mm -hmm. then just friends and family that, that we knew and we relied on them like, hey, do you know somebody that could possibly play this role yeah. and they're like yeah. yeah i got a couple people let me mm -hmm. send them over to you that i'm thinking of and yeah i say the biggest issue we ran into were uh getting uh the caucasian people because yes. we say we're doing a black wall street movie and we need you know we need white people and they be like okay we'll do it and i'm like okay so we need you to say the n-word like 50 times and they're like oh no i can't be seen like that I wow. yeah. yeah um that was the toughest part um and then I'd say next toughest was because no one was professional actors. It was like mm -hmm. time restraints were always an mm -hmm. issue. Like, yeah, I can come this day, but only for like this long, for like two hours. And we're like, mm -hmm. we got to make it work. Also making October, December and January look like May yeah. was not easy. Wow. <laughs> so How did you do it? How did you do it? Because it, it, I didn't even realize that when I watched it. <laughs> uh well we found good locations and uh color grading helped a lot yeah. okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well uh we have more to talk about uh in this unique and historic journey but we'll be right back after these messages you're listening to talk with tara presented by african-american woman in cinema right here on rudy radio Formula One driver. I spent to get to Long Island Telecom before they closed. I need to get one of these fantastic deals that Long Island Telecom has because you can't beat the price anywhere else. Oh, get away from that car. What are you doing? Freaking kids playing with the car out there. Anyway, I'm glad I got here. Wait, what do you mean you're closing? I got to come back tomorrow? What's your number? 631-833-9679? Oh, stop writing me a ticket. We're having a conversation with African-American filmmakers. Join the African-American Women in Cinema Filmmaker Series at the Clubhouse. Presented by I Am the Color of Beautiful Global. Every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. AAWIC on Clubhouse. Join us on the Clubhouse app for this inspiring conversation. Hosted by Karen Moore, 
founder of I Am The Color of Beautiful Global. Join us this Monday at 6 p.m. on the Clubhouse app for African American Women in Cinema's Filmmaker Series. Hey, this is Jewel Taker from the Jewel Taker Show on Impact Network. Also, you can watch me and my family on The Tankers on Prime Amazon or watch me and my sister's Chatter Talk Show on Fox. So me and my girls, Dr. Dee Dee Freeman, Monique Islet Mosley, Real Talk Kim, and Holly Carter. And you're watching Rudy Radio. To talk with Tara, I'm Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema, and today we are talking to the dynamic filmmaking duel, <laughs> Marcus and Doctor. I call him Doctor. They're talking about their unique journey in making their first feature film, in which we featured at our historic film festival in commemor in the centennial commemoration of the Oklahoma. Tra tragedies. So, Marcus and Doctor, uh, before we went to commercial, you were telling me uh, the interesting story about casting, and uh, that was good, and how long it took you all to shoot the film. And I am still in amazement because you have a wonderful full length feature. So, I'm amazed at uh, the time frame that it took you to shoot it. How did you finance it? We bootstrapped it ourselves. Um, mm. We really we didn't even think about how much it's going to cost. We just <laughs> was just going. Oh, wow. And, yeah. Um, I'd say one of the reasons it didn't take us as long to film it was because it was just us working everything. I think okay. if we had more people, it probably would have taken longer because we would have had to uh direct and delegate everyone to doing what they're supposed to be doing but for us we took on the <laughs> yeah the the much impossible task of two men making a film um <laughs> and having a cast of 30 people but yeah really financing it um was just bootstrapping we found locations that were free where people would let us use it for free for the most part <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and if, if we couldn't use it for free, that, those were places that cost um, mm -hmm. the money. And then uh, a lot of it was B-roll. Um, yeah. We oh, wow. A lot of stock footage to help us out. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of hours spent scouring the internet looking for the right B-roll. Yeah. Had, had people bringing their own wardrobe. Yep. Wow. Uh, we let everybody know we'll, we'll give you uh, credit for the movie and that's when mm -hmm. the money stops. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was really just I want to say like it was a labor of love. Like we just we we pushed through. We we'd hit an obstacle, we found our way either over it or around it. Yeah. Just because we we wanted to get the movie done. We knew when we wanted to put it out. So if we had to drop a scene or whatever, we we do what we had to do. And and and, and what he said about knowing when to put it out. Um, originally, we were focused on putting it out in April of last year mm -hmm. because we we wanted to take our time with editing and post production and try to make everything right. But uh, going back to God, I really strongly mm -hmm. felt God telling me put it out in February, which I'm glad mm -hmm. I'm glad we did because mm -hmm. Corona shut everything down and we wow. got a good run in February. Um, in theaters. And so, yeah, we, we had to, we wrapped shooting with midway through December yep. mm -hmm. and uh, editing process between December and, and February, we had to, to really churn it out. That is amazing. I, I tell you, I am blown away. Here's a quirky question. You know, I was talking about this aspect of the uh, film shooting process with another filmmaker and they laughed one particular year when we did our film festival and uh, we had Robert Townsend, Mr. Townsend came and did a, a workshop on how he produced his first independent film. And he got a lot of the financing from a national show. commercial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. then he, he maxed out on credit cards, yeah. but yeah. it was one thing aspect of it that he had everybody laughing and he talked about uh -huh. craft services 
<laughs> and he said he was literally screaming at the crew, don't eat the chicken. <laughs> so, you know, I brought that up with another filmmaker and, and he laughed and he said, you know, I didn't realize as a first time filmmaker, how much food is consumed while shooting. What was your experience in that? Uh, for us, it was it was easy. Oh, we good. only had people come for like, okay, if you, you're in this scene, come here for these two hours and then you, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> but we really didn't have to feed people too much because they weren't sitting around. They couldn't sit around all day. They didn't have time. They had lives that they were living. And they like, mm -hmm. we can give you this much time for this. And then, so we just had to make it work on this particular film. <laughs> on other films that we've done since then, yeah, we we feed people. Marcus' wife is a great chef. So oh. we oftentimes utilize her as our craft services. And <laughs> yeah, she can, she can whip it up. Well, that's well, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She can make it stretch. I love yes. it. <laughs> yes, she can. <laughs> Did you shoot a lot of this film in Tulsa or it, where, where did you shoot the majority of the film? So we're in Oklahoma City um, okay. and we shot it all here. Um, okay. Logistically, we didn't have the resources to travel everybody up to Tulsa mm -hmm. and to try to find the locations and things like that. So we had to really try to find locations here in Oklahoma City that will work. And so we shot majority of it in Oklahoma City. And then about uh, 25, 30 minutes up the road is a, another town called Guthrie, uh, where we mm -hmm. shot um, a little bit of the film. Small, yeah. We shot a small portion in Guthrie. Oh, OK. OK. We actually That's... wanted to shoot a lot more of it in Guthrie, but mm -hmm. one of the <laughs> we, we did a bunch of work getting streets reserved and blocked mm -hmm. off. And we had this nice sheriff station Mm. Um, set up. Um, it's the same place where where the jail scenes were filmed, where uh, mm -hmm. Dale was in jail and the sheriff had him in there. Right outside of there is a beautiful sheriff station, old uh, looking, mm -hmm. and it rained for ever. Yeah, it rained <laughs> the entire time we had the street blocked. It rained that entire time. And the moment we was like, all right, we're going to just pack up and go home. It's it stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So had to learn on the fly. We just got to make adjustments. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. Roll with the punches, as uh, as they say. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. So who crafted the story, the actual story? I thought that was so interesting. You know I, how I, I wrote the off. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I wrote the first iteration and then ran it by Marcus and he you know, would give critiques and pointers and, you know, here, there, uh, bits and pieces. But I mean, it really just stemmed from we both were doing research, looking into different mm -hmm. things. And we was like, OK, well, let's try to figure out a way to make this into a movie because mm -hmm. we can't just tell the story based on how people have told the story because it's just really the story, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so and we Again, not really knowing much about all oh, people's rights and if we start using real names and all these other things. So we just kind of let's make it about this, but kind of switch it up a bit. And one of the things that we tried to do is keep initials the same, but change the names of people or places or things um, outside of Greenwood. That's awesome. That was good. I tell you, I enjoy. Okay, I have to ask you this. How did you do the fire scene? How did you do that? Uh oh, that's oh, another oh. loaded question. <laughs> I mean, we just went around and burned stuff down as fast as we could and had fire departments. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just oh, kidding. No, 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 really? <laughs> no, no. Uh -oh. wow. no um, that's, that's, music, that's movie magic. Uh, we. Oh. Been out and like I said, scoured the internet and we purchased B-roll. Um, we okay. purchased stock footage from various sites um, that won't be named because they're not paying us. So, um, but we went out and got as much as we could that, that fit the that we could afford mm -hmm. and that fit the movie. B-roll is not cheap. It's not cheap. Um, and there were some scenes that originally we found and we was like, okay, this could work. And it was actually more like 
Civil War. Yeah, it was too far back. Oh. But we were gonna, we was like, we couldn't find anything else. So it was like, mm -hmm. I had to use some of this. It was mm -hmm. one particular scene you remember when they, all them dudes came running right out, out that the building. building. <laughs> I really wanted to use that. I really did. Really, it was too old. <laughs> yeah, it was too old. And uh, yeah. just luckily, I feel like, what, maybe a couple of weeks before we were finished editing the movie, we, f we ran into some footage that I was like, oh, this actually, they're driving the cars. It, it looks, it, it fits. It's a reenactment. And so, yeah, we, we just was able to get enough B-roll. And that was really half the budget. I was saying, most of the budget was the B-roll. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. So I'm curious, uh, as you begin to show this film around, have any of the descendants contact you? And if so, what were some of their comments? Yeah, um, I got a contact from uh, one of the doctors that was murdered there mm. from one of, I guess, great granddaughter. Wow. Reached out. Um, I don't even know if she'd seen the film yet or not. Mm -hmm. um, but this was like right when it released here in Oklahoma, she reached out and I think she was in Kansas. Mm. Um, but she was just trying to figure out how we could get the film up there and mm -hmm. um, different things like that. And uh, the only, I mean, my, my stepfather's a descendant, so if that counts. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. I guess my wife is a descendant too. Uh, my oh, wife wow. is from Tulsa. Her okay. great, great grandmother. Yes. Great, great. Grandmother wow. had, a, had a shop in Greenwood as well. Yeah, my, my oh, stepfather's wow. family was in Greenwood, and then they, when the when it happened, they moved to Tallahassee, which is like right outside of Tulsa. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. that those those are our closest descendants Since, that, yeah. that we got. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now um, you know a lot of uh, some of the audience may not know this, but when you're shooting a film, you just have these moments. There are some moments that's just so comical that it's just unbelievable. And then there's some moments that's just so devastating that it's just unbelievable. Do you want to share a comical moment and you don't have to share the other type of moment? <laughs> uh, well, for me, uh, the most comical moment in the movie is uh, the, the one they're playing uh, spades in the yeah. beginning of the movie. And uh, Ernest thinks they're playing poker. So he slams <laughs> the cards down and he yells poker and everybody's looking like, what is he? Yeah, that that's probably my favorite moment in the whole movie. Yeah. Um, I definitely say um, in the post-production side of things, one mm -hmm. moment, one moment that we saw that was powerful, but I don't think realize how powerful it was until we added the score to it was uh, Mama Ridley crying on the porch. Um, mm. When she did it, when we were filming it, we was like, great job. You did a great job. Yeah. But then once we put the score to it, it just, it gave wow. a completely different feel. Yeah, I, I refuse to watch that scene. Wow. It's, it's, it gets, it's emotional. And then no one likes seeing a black mother cry. Yeah. Mm. So it's like, I can't, I can't watch it. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, um, Another question out of this whole filmmaking experience, you can tell I'm fascinated with what you all did. Uh, what finally, Marcus, made you realize that Doc was telling you the truth? Like, we have to do this film. At what point while, while you know, getting head uh, strong into it that you said, OK, that's the confirmation. All right, we're going to move forward. And before you answer that question, We'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Talk with Tara, presented by African American Women in Cinema, right here on Rudy Radio.
I'm Dan O'Shea, Executive Director for Maureen's Haven Homeless Outreach. It is our mission to support the homeless in our community. We provide an emergency winter shelter program, a day center, and support services to help the homeless in our community. With your help, we can continue to provide services so critically needed to the homeless in our community. Please visit www.morningshaven.org or call us at 631-727-683. Welcome back to Talk with Tara. I am Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema. And today we are talking to one of the most powerful filmmaking duels in Oklahoma. And before you went to break, I had asked Marcus a question, uh, actually both of them, uh, Marcus and Doc, question as to what was the con confirmation uh, that they that they felt and saw that they knew that this was the right thing to do and really yes it is geared towards marcus because doc already knew it but marcus go ahead uh for me it wasn't until we had already finished the movie um mm. it, was out, it was in theaters i mean i believe obviously i mean I, I put my heart and soul to the movie so i loved it but we went to northwestern university to mm -hmm. talk to students about the film. And this, uh, the lady who walked us to the classroom, she she was a student there. She When she found out what we had done and realized we were the directors of the movie, she started crying when she met us. Wow. And just, she, I mean, we had met other people who cried when they met us, like we were, you know, famous or something, but- <laughs> You're famous. This, <laughs> but. <laughs> The, the stuff, it was the thing she was saying, you know, the story needed to be told. Thank you so much. I didn't know any stuff like that was it. It hit me to the point where it was like, you know, I made something that was a part of history and not, you know, I, I, cause to me, the, the thing that made me want to make movies was Howard the Duck. That's not really a gigantic piece of, you know, cinema right there. But mm -hmm. for me, it was very impactful. So for me to be impactful like that to someone else, Mm. That's when I was like, okay, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and I'll say what really made me say, oh, we have to do this. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. before it was like, we, we need to. Mm -hmm. um, and then we began to do it. Mm -hmm. I was in Guthrie uh, securing streets for us to, to um, film on. And I had to go shop to shop and get owners to sign a waiver for allowing us to like shut down the street so we could film on the street. Mm -hmm. And one particular owner was like, he asked what we were doing. And, and as many others had asked, and I would tell him, and it's like, oh, okay. And he was like, why won't y'all just let that go? We got some good people around here. And I, at that point I was like, hmm, it's still not gone. Like people still wow. have a, uh, a angst about it. And so, mm. it's, and it's not even out there like that. <laughs> so mm. I was like, yeah, we, we got to dig in and be, mm -hmm. and be prepared. And then we, mm -hmm. once we put the trailer out, we did see a, a, a handful of trolls come around mm -hmm. uh, and then say certain things that, that mm -hmm. were uh, unpleasing. I say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's amazing. You know, here we are a hundred years later. And the mere fact that we still are contending with this issue is just absolutely mind blowing. So now that you have a studio, what's next on the agenda and what have you done since then? And what's uh, if you can talk about what you have coming down the pipe? Uh, well, what we have coming, uh, I'll start there, <laughs> is uh, Black Wall Street, the director's cut is coming out. Oh. Oh, um, wow. I, we're trying to get it out in the coming weeks, we'll say that. Okay. Um, but it, uh, Excellent. It's, it's about 20 to 30 minutes longer. Uh, okay. It gives you more with the characters, makes you connect more with them, gives you more backstory. Mm -hmm. um, it's a better film. Uh, yeah, you get to say. see more prestige. Yeah. Uh, you okay. get to see a little bit more lavishness. Um, better and, cars, bigger yeah. houses. And you just get to... You get to experience Greenwood a little bit more in a, in a different way, um, and it just it just gives a better flow to the movie. I would say when when we look at what we've put together for the director's cut, I'm very upset that's not what we put out first. It's yeah. that oh, it's wow. that much better than the original. 
But wow. um, it, it's, it's still the same actor. So it was, we didn't we didn't change anything. We just added to what was already there. We we just fattened up the movie more. So um, we'll definitely let you know when that's out. So you can. Oh please, out. please. Um, and what we have uh, also coming, uh, we have her part two coming out. Oh. Um, and then we have a, a I say I guess a romantic comedy called Truth Be Told that'll be coming out later this year. Oh wow! And, um, if you go to our YouTube channel, you can see all of our films outside of Black Wall Street burning. Um, you can see her. You can see mm -hmm. uh, the suffering, um, mm. which is a horror comedy. Yeah, it's kind of a horror comedy. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and you can see Bonded, which is a concept film, a uh, short film that we've done and put together. Um, and then one of the biggest things that we're trying to do is we are actively trying to put together um, a star-studded cast for Black Wall Street series. Oh, beautiful. And, um, yeah, so if any of your listeners wants to, uh, you know, invest in and help that come to fruition, we are looking yes. at trying to, to, to make something uh, more of the Hollywood level uh, of okay. um, filmmaking for this series. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, please make sure that I have that information. You know, you know how to contact me. Please, okay. you know, once you have that together, email it to me. That would be great. Wow. That's awesome. Very good. How do you, how do you go about uh, picking or selecting the films that you want to direct and produce? Uh, well, the, the joy of owning the studio is we sit down and say, hey, uh, let's make a movie about watches. And then <laughs> Colin, will, Colin will say, OK, well, what's the story? And I'll break the story down. And he'd be like, sounds good. Write it. <laughs> and there, there's the movie. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the, the beauty for us is we do everything. We write mm -hmm. it. We concept mm -hmm. it. We do the pre-production. Mm -hmm. We do the production. We also do all the post-production as well. Wow. So um, we do it start to finish. Um, oh, beautiful. Yeah. One of our biggest things that we do want, that we want to do, especially, I say when we, I guess it was really after we did Black Wall Street is there's still so many more black stories in Oklahoma yeah. that haven't been told. Yes. And so, yes, we are actually actively in the moment working mm -hmm. and concepting out a story for Deep Deuce that was here in Oklahoma City. So, mm. um, which we wow. be dealing with the the early early fifties, late forties um, jazz and blues scene here in Oklahoma City. So that's going to be a very uh, music filled film. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, it should be enjoyable. Um, but I, 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 what I tell people when they ask what we do when we make our movies, like you were asking, I just say if you watch the the end credits of Black Wall Street after the cast is done, you only see two names about five hundred times. Yeah. Wow, we do everything, mm -hmm. <laughs> right mm -hmm. and uh, I was explaining because my wife, she didn't know, you know, she doesn't know a lot about film. She didn't know, you know, she knows it takes 30, 40 people, and I'm like, nah, it takes way more. There'd be hundreds of people on these sets. That's why credits are like ten minutes long. Yeah, but, yeah. And I was like, so all those people who do all those jobs, that's what we do by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So. It's a lot of work because our wives barely saw us in post. When we were in post production, we were working twenty four hour days. Mm. Our computers were crashing, so we could <laughs> like well, I spent more time at the office getting the movie done than I did at home. And my wife was angry and <laughs> frustrated, and we're uh, no. all the time. But then when we had a, <laughs> we did the movie premiere in Tulsa, yeah. uh, we oh, brought wow. our wives with us, and the mm -hmm. TV people were out there, and you had wow. lines around the outside wow. and to see the movie and that's when they saw okay i didn't get to see them but they produced something that mm -hmm. you know, people want to see yeah and mm -hmm. i i think that helped it for when we were like all right we're doing the director's cut my wife was like all right well i'll just get ready to not see you for a while then so it, <laughs> it, it, it gets a little bit easier when they see mm -hmm. the the success that comes from it. yeah right and it's important to uh like you you know like you did bring them uh, in on or bring them in the loop so they can understand, you know, the process a little bit better and it helps. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. And, I, so, and I think, I think mm -hmm. for us, um, mm -hmm. you know, so much in, when people get famous or Hollywood or you, even when you're doing something that you love, you forget the yeah. person that, that helped you and you weren't there. Yeah. So mm -hmm. us bringing our wives along, especially because, you know, you're, you're one with your spouse. So us, us bringing mm -hmm. our wives along is, was really important to both of us. 
because I mean, what first, especially for me, without my wife, I don't think I would have been able to do oh, any of this. Yeah. So same here. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so sweet. That's special. Shout out to the wives. Yes. yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Big shout that out. is so awesome. Now, um, I heard you say earlier, y'all talked about uh, you had the film in the theater. Was that something that you self dis uh, distribute or uh, yeah. that was through a distribution company? Yeah, no, we self distribute. Our goal originally, <laughs> when we first made the film, we didn't think anybody was going to watch this movie. <laughs> I'm just being honest. We thought wow. our family and friends would watch it. We would show it in the theater for maybe like a day or two. Um, they say, a boy, good job. Yeah, and, and that was gonna be it. We were targeting a theater here in Oklahoma City, in Northeast Oklahoma City, which is the black side of town. Um, but they, it was Cinemark, mm -hmm. uh, Tinseltown owns it. Uh, I mean, Cinemark owns the theater, Tinseltown. And they essentially just kind of we're not interested. Just, we're not interested. They made us spend a bunch of money and then tell us that they weren't interested. Wow. And so we was like, what are we going to do? And Marcus was like, uh, let's check Harkins. Um, and so we got in touch with Harkins. We sent them the trailer and they was like, yeah, we can uh, four wall do a four walls. Wow. Um, and if anybody's watched uh, Dolomite. Dolomite. Uh, Eddie yeah. Murphy movie. Uh -huh. he, he, that's what he did with Dolomite at first. He four walls it. And so we did the same thing. Mm -hmm. And um, after it kept selling out week after week, uh, wow. they, they was like, hey, we want to pick it up and wow. put it in theaters, which they did for like a week and then COVID. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. So yeah, as soon as, yeah. soon as the, the plane started taking off, we had to land it. Had to land it. <laughs> Bring it in. Safe. Wow. Well, the good news is you certainly had a good ride prior. Oh, yeah, and, definitely. And, and got recognition uh, for it. And that's good. So building up a good track record and the fact that, you know, you made something so attractive, it will certainly uh, keep the audience appetite going. Yeah. Now, where do you uh, and I'm really excited about the uh, director's cut. Where do you see that going? That's, is that going to go in the theater now that, you know, things are kind of opening back up or are you going to do streaming or what, do you, what are your thoughts? Or you didn't put any thoughts to it yet. Well, we're definitely going to stream it. Um, we've been reached out to buy a, a streaming platform that's coming online in August. Um, oh, good. So we, we're working out a deal with them. And we're also going to try to put it on as many platforms as we can. One of the things that we definitely want to do here in Oklahoma is try to get with some of the local TV stations and see mm -hmm. if we can get a good run on TV here. Um, but yeah, we're going to self-distribute again. Um, theaters, not sure if we'll go that route again uh, mm -hmm. this time, but because because they're not they're not back like they were. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, yeah. right. I understand. Well, we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Talk with Tara, presented by African American Woman in Cinema, right here on Rudy Radio. Hi, I'm Dan O'Shea, Executive Director for Maureen's Haven Homeless Outreach. It is our mission to support the homeless in our community. We provide an emergency winter shelter program, a day center, and support services to help the homeless in our community. With your help, we can continue to provide services so critically needed to the homeless in our community. Please visit www.mooringshaven.org or call us at 631-727-683. Welcome back to Talk with Tara. I am Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema. And today we are talking with the powerful and dynamic filmmaking duel who have their own studio in Oklahoma. And they are doing it and just so happy to be speaking with them uh, on this show. Marcus and Doc, how can we follow you? Uh, can you please give us your uh, social media handles? Uh, and also, if someone have a movie idea, is there a process that they uh, that you have? that they need to subscribe to, to get an idea to you. How can you explain, you know, what that's all about? Uh, yeah. If someone wants to reach out to us, um, our email is notice, N-O-T-I-S, 
studios 405 at gmail.com or you can go to our website notastudios.com and scroll down the contact and you can contact us that way um, as well uh you can find us on uh essentially what is it uh youtube is notice studios yeah. which is n-o-t-i-s then you can find us on instagram notice studios underscore essentially if you type in notice studios you can't go wrong right <laughs> anywhere <laughs> but um our facebook page uh, we have a black wall street burning facebook page as well as a notice studios page you can get us on either one of them and we control all of that so the person if we write back to you it's actually one of us talking to you not just like a, a person in india somewhere who has no idea who you are so um we we do i mean we have all social media yeah. twitter um everything it's just notice studios yeah. and you you in that thing you'll find us that's awesome well, I want to star in roll. So where do I come and audition for your next uh, movie or series? We got you. Yeah, you, you already <laughs> in. Yeah, we got you. Oh, well, in. that's good. Okay. All right. That sounds like a plan to me. Excellent. Who were your um, inspiration in, in the world of filmmaking? Or who is? Oh, goodness. Yeah, I mean... That's saying a lot. You mentioned one, Robert, Robert Townsend. Townsend yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> our favorite movie. Uh huh. <laughs> like together. Oh, five heartbeats. Five heartbeats. Oh, dang. like really? That is like one all <laughs> Love time that movie. Favorite movie. Wow. I think we, we quote it at we, least once a day. Yes. We talk about that movie. Yeah. Really? So yeah. Wow. That, he's definitely one. Um, I, I mean, Spike definitely. Oh yeah, that's a big one. Um, I mean, I I hate to not keep it black, but. Um, Steven Spielberg is big for Of me. course, of uh, course. I, anything he puts out, I watch. Tarantino. Yes, oh, Tarantino you know, is big. And then just, you know, I mean, Denzel, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I love what he did with the great debaters. Yeah. That was good to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, excellent directing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, I mean, Ryan Coogler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is, is definitely one of the more powerful ones that we we look up to um but yeah i'm i mean it's really it's just yeah yeah mm, wow did you uh ever and i'm sure this is a common question i i ask a lot uh did you ever had a moment or maybe there were moments where you said you know what maybe i made a mistake this is not what i'm supposed to be doing i am going to quit now and if so oh. uh how did you get to that point and then what 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 talked you off the ledge <laughs> i mean we're, we're both in good places so yeah. mm -hmm. like i'm i mean i'm retired from the military and you know oh, he's good. a doctor but uh he's he's a real estate mogul in oklahoma so oh good so it's like for us our families are good so this good. is like our both of our second career yeah but since we own it it makes it easier to not want to quit now there are days where your computer goes crazy or a program doesn't work yeah. where you're just like you know i could be home right now i mean <laughs> that, that, that does happen <laughs> <laughs> and again, we're both men of faith, and mm -hmm. you know we both believe God placed us here and told us to do this. So mm. I don't think we ever get that sense. Like because God told us, then, mm. okay. I mean, I am supposed to be doing this, no matter what setbacks or trials or failures or whatever we go through. There's a purpose behind all of it. So I think anybody who who does anything well, well is going. You're going to go through hardships and, and trials yes. mm -hmm. and i mean even working with the director's cut right now we cut it all together and and it was perfect we we were perfect <laughs> we were really in a in a mode of of putting it all together and then our timeline got corrupted and we couldn't get back into it so we had to recut the movie we had to recut the movie wow <laughs> It, it happens, especially working with Black Wall Street. I don't know what, what it is about working with this movie. It just, yeah. But I will say that the biggest discouragement that I have had since we started, because um, mm -hmm. I live on Twitter. To me, if it's not trending, it's not real. But mm. I'm huge on that app. I love it. But somebody mm -hmm. said on Twitter that there is a movie finally about Black Wall Street out. 
but I'm not going to watch it because it's probably trash because LeBron mm. is putting something out anyway. So I'm going to wait for him. And I was like, well, LeBron James is putting out a documentary. This is a movie. The mm -hmm. only feature film ever made about this and is made by two black men who are actually in Oklahoma. But you're not interested because I'm not LeBron James. So I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't do this because I'm not as big as LeBron. And then I prayed on it, and I was like, you know what? But that doesn't mean that I can't be. So I can. And we could be, you know, the, the LeBron James of film, you know, and we could we could do our thing. And but if LeBron James is listening, um, it wasn't a knock on you, Brian. I'm not. You know, I'm not knocking. We, we can partner. I, we know you <laughs> bring him over there. We know you do movies and things over there. So we could definitely partner. <laughs> and all, all, all I was saying was people will, because we've had people say, you know, Russell Westbrook's doing something. And this, we keep explaining to people, this is a film, not a documentary. And you putting us in the same categories, but you have to understand this is the first and only feature film made about this. Now, granted, since the centennial happened, everybody and their mother is jumping all over Black mm -hmm. Wall Street. Mm -hmm. But we did it before it was, you know, the it thing in Hollywood to talk about. Mm -hmm. So that 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 for that for me, I can always hold on to that. I did something, or we did something mm -hmm. before anybody else cared, and that's always going to matter. So I, I mean, what what trolls say is what trolls say. Now I just use this motivation as opposed to mm -hmm. putting me down. Yeah, I think that's the, good. I think one of the big things. Anybody out there listening, if you're trying to do something worthwhile, you're always going to have people tell you either don't do it you shouldn't do it or why you're gonna suck at doing it and remember you're not doing it for that person though that's not your audience mm -hmm. you have an audience focus on the people who are telling you keep going good job and they're being inspired by you because that's really going to be the thing that, that pushes you it's, it's interesting when you when you read comments on social media, because people will say some of the craziest things. Like, <laughs> um, I think one, one of the craziest things I heard was Oprah probably did this movie. They just watched the trailer on YouTube. Oprah probably did this. And I'm pretty sure it ain't no real African-Americans in there. They probably all British. <laughs> like, really? yeah. Yeah. And if you read mm -hmm. right underneath the description, it says, who made it where we're from. It says it all right there. So it's, it's interesting. <laughs> no, but you know what, Doc? You made a very interesting point because I think this is uh, a note that has not been taught to us to understand that your gifting and your calling has its already built-in audience. Yep. Anything outside of that is it, not anything to be concerned with. And yes, they're going to because they're not part of your audience for your gifting and calling that God is giving you, then they're going to say what they're going to say because they're not even on that wavelength that you're yeah. on in mm -hmm. your execution. So they, they can't identify or they, they can't relate to it or, or simply they may possibly don't want to. And that's okay because that's who they are, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, you know, as artists, sometimes we have this extra layer of sensitivity and that's just part of, of artistry. You know, you have to have that to really, uh, execute something in its more, uh, authentic state, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, so that folks can feel what you're executing. And so, uh, but only your tribe, only your tribe will appreciate that and understand you know where you're coming from so i have uh taken a line from a young lady she told me i don't know how she got to this point but she told me she have learned how to bless them and release them so <laughs> i said okay that sounds good you know and keep it moving they cannot define your worth they cannot define your value that's right and neither can they take it away you know, it did not begin with them and it won't end with them. That's true. So um, you're responsible for executing what God has given you to the people he have already allocated for them to receive it. Outside of that, that is just totally uh, not anything to be concerned about. And it's easier said than done because we're human 
you know, and we are conditioned to want acceptance and that's normal. Yeah, that's normal. But I think as you mature or grow into it, you begin to understand the, the lay of the land, if you will. And then I think it can help, you know, uh, propel you forward. I mean, what are your thoughts on what I just said? I wholeheartedly agree. I think um, it is a, a definitely a level of maturity to understand that one, everybody's not going to be for you. But then also, like you said, that to to the, have the introspective to say, I do want acceptance, but mm-hmm. it's the acceptance isn't what makes me. Yeah. And so, I mean, when, when you can have that perspective on top of understanding, I have an audience. Those who like it. That's what this is for. No matter what what it is you're selling, what product or anything that you're trying to put out there, you have an audience. Mm-hmm. For me, I would just say anything God puts his hands on, the world is automatically not going to like. So, mm. you know, you, it, it's for we, we make our films. People are going to love it. People are going to hate it. But we know who's giving us the energy and, and the ability to make what we make. So, you know, as long as God's approval is there, that, that's all we need. And I look at Tyler Perry as a big mm. example because he knows his audience is yeah. black women, period. So mm. he makes his films, his plays geared for who he knows is going to go out there, watch his films, so watch his plays, support him, you know, and they're going to bring their husbands or whatever. But he knows who his core audience is. That is another one that I, I look up to because that man does business like, incredibly uh, like he has incredibly set things in motion t- to work for him in a space where he's like, I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't care what nobody else mm-hmm. think or say. And uh, to me, you got to have a relationship with God to be able to walk in that kind of way. Yeah. And for us, we, we had someone reach out to us to do something for them film wise. And they I mean, we found out that I mean, we had already kind of known, but we're the only black owned movie studio in or production house in oklahoma yeah and that's i mean wow. oklahoma is, is not a small state so yeah and then we're and then we're making films but we're making the only ever film made about things it's just interesting to see how we're setting trends and we just hope people come up behind us and do the same thing well that's very inspirational i tell you it is such a joy to have you both uh on this show i'm inspired you've inspired me to a whole nother level. And thank you so much again for taking out your wonderful time. I certainly look forward to being in Oklahoma in my star and role. I just request a trailer and a makeup artist and I'm good. I got everything else. <laughs> I got you. Got you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't know where the time went, but they're telling me that we have to go. And thank you so much for listening to Talk with Tara. I am Tara Renee from African American Women in Cinema organization. You can visit us at www.aawic.org. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Talk with Tara is made possible by Rude Rangers Entertainment. Our creative director is Rudy J. Breedy. Please don't forget to like and share this episode with as many people as possible. We sincerely appreciate you joining us today and wish you continued peace, blessings, and prosperity. See you next episode.